Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So today's video, I'm going to draw uh, one leg pose and then copy it, but I'm going to shade it three different ways in a comic book style. And I just think that this would be a helpful series of videos if you guys like it and tell me and I'll bring you more. But to really focus on certain aspects like the shading, the suit designs. But in this particular one, it's a little bit more on the lighting, but in regard to the suit materials, so essentially... If you were to take it and say, okay, this one, uh, for instance, is going to have a dual light source. So that one light source on the inside of the leg is actually called like a rim light or edge lighting. And it can be colored, a separate color. It actually really enhances the uh, end result if you do that. So we have a primary light source on the right of the leg and then a secondary edge lighting to the left of the leg. And this is the way that I do it. So you get the bulk of those shadows in between those two because it's almost like the two lights are fighting for dominance on the uh, leg form and that's kind of how I think about it and then I use the rounded shapes to kind of uh, illustrate where the lights uh, taking over in essence and then when I get to the rendering uh, or the cross hatching or I like to call it feathered lines but I think that's confused people before really they're just tapered lines that I'm creating those aren't w one singular pull I'm actually doing multiple passes on each line to get it to look like that just so you know with pressure sensitivity on uh, the iPad Pro and Procreate. But anyways so I'm just tapering those lines cross hatching them a bit but my main focus here is to round out the forms and to shade just a little bit differently on one side from the other. Since I'm still thinking about them as two entirely different light sources I want to try to illustrate that even with the shading. And that's just my idea on it, my depiction of it. Uh, I don't know if that's a right or wrong way or anything like that. I'm just giving you my feedback to the way that I look at it as I'm creating this. Uh, but I really just try to add bits of style in at this part. I don't know if it's entirely uh, correct or anything like that. But it's style choices and it's me further trying to add depth and, and shape to the form. Uh, so now for the next one, or almost there I guess. Uh, the next one is going to be a singular light source, and it's going to be a light source on the front of the leg. Uh, and also, it's going to be a little bit more of a specular material. So this would be like if the character was wearing those, you know, stretchy pants that they like to wear for their superhero gear. And you get a little bit of light glaring off the front of each main mass of the musculature. I start with these little spikes that are actually pretty popular in comics. You'll see a lot of people do this, something like this style. It's never my strong suit for some reason, so I end up scratching it, but I always keep trying. Like, I just never give up, even though I probably should with that particular style of shading, because I never seem to get it right, and I end up segueing to something else. But you'll see me try a few different things here before I settle on something, and I, I do lots of experimentation in my work with everything, really, but uh, definitely with the shading. I'm always trying to find the next best thing to make my art a little bit better, and I think you get that from experimenting, not settling on the same old idea that you've always done and that you're confident with, but just always trying new things. And, and that you know, experimentation leads to invention and, and uh, new ideas and all, all that great stuff, you know. So at any rate, this is what I end up going with. So I start doing a little bit heavier uh, tapered line, and then I cross hatch the lines. And uh, I do it in a more short and abrupt manner so that it looks like a... A more steep transition from dark to light so to me that's what I see when I study things that are specular uh, they generally have a quicker abrupt change from dark to light so you want to illustrate that even in your line work at least that's that's what I do and that's how I see it so that's what I'm doing here this is ultimately the way that I would do it and these little lines take a little while so you'll see here in a second I end up cheating I, I get a few in place and then I go, a light bulb clicks on. I go, you know what? This is digital. I can copy it and paste it and reuse my line work. And, uh, you know, I'm sure some people think of that like I'm cheating. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. It's like, to me, if it's you've done it once and you prove you can do it and you're really just saving time, then you're not cheating. You're just working smart. Um, so if you notice, I'm curving those lines with the musculature, with the anatomy, so that it helps round that out. Uh, so I, I think I remember picking that up from uh, David Finch in one of his tutorials. So you can check him out. It does amazing work. But he, he said something to that extent. You know, you almost want to picture the shadow wrapping around the form 
and likewise with your line work you want to help illustrate that so those are really directional lines uh, and you know some people do it the other way where or not even think about that they just kind of do these flat lines across and it still looks cool it's really st again back to style choices but uh, I, I think it looks a bit better in my opinion so that's what I shoot for so a lot of repetitiveness now I am actually back to drawing on my quick copy in there so I'm no longer cheating and uh, for the final one I'm almost wrapped up with uh, pose number two you see these lines take a little bit longer than the rest of the uh, illustration um, but it's worth it you know in my opinion it really sets it off so that gives it a nice shiny glare look now for the last one it's just a singular light source so this is more plain Jane and this is actually what I would do for most standard uh, you know anatomy shots or character shots or whatever uh, because I try to use the other ones more as effect based so the middle ones more if they're wearing a suit the one to the left is more if they're in a dynamic scene with multiple lights this is just a basic uh, lighting of a, a regular uh, anatomy shot of a leg so uh, so here I just did a, a bulk of shadows to the one side and you can see they're grouped together and they kind of form together at that point and then also just a very light shading so I don't go too awfully crazy with the, the cross hatching uh, still trying to wrap around the forms and things like that and further illustrate the roundedness of the uh, anatomy but I don't go too nuts with it and do lots and lots of shading because again I want there to be some kind of contrast to the way that I shade different things you know I think one of the biggest problems that young artists face or just all of us in general is it's real easy to just put this singular pass of shading over everything and then there's not enough separation in your panels and your pages to make it look as dynamic as it could so hopefully this uh, series of videos will teach you a thing or two. Let me know in the comments section below what you thought of it and what you'd like to see in the future. If there's a particular topic that you'd like to see covered, I'm always listening. Uh, you can check out the links in the description box below to support my work and follow up for other video tutorials and custom brushes. So as always, I appreciate you tuning in and watching. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.